Here's an example of graphing a simple function of two variables, uh, both by looking at cross-sections and at level curves. So the probably the most important thing to note is that there's different kinds of pictures of a function of two variables. And one is the actual graph itself, where we're going to try and use all three dimensions, um, x, y, and z. And then there's the contour plot, which takes the level curve of the function and just graphs all of them in the xy plane. And that can often be a lot simpler. And it's once you get used to it, it's actually a pretty good picture of the function. But it's nice to be able to do both. So um, let's look at uh, some of the cross sections of this. It's, it's, it's a slight modification of what, what I was doing in class. That if you look at the sections, or traces, uh, let's say if you set x equals 0, then you're going to get z equals y squared. And that's in the yz plane. So in the yz plane, let me use maybe colors here. In the yz plane, it's going to be a pretty standard parabola. And we could go ahead and do x equals 1, x equals minus 1, x equals 2, x equals minus 2, but we saw in class how those kind of get stacked up and get kind of a mess. You want to concentrate more on looking in different directions first, and then only if it's necessary, repeat, go back and repeat sections in the same direction. So let's look at y equals 0. That's going to be z equals 4x squared. And that's going to be a steeper parabola, so in other words, a narrower parabola coming in the zx plane where y equals 0. So I'm going to try and draw that really steep. Okay. So it's wide in the y direction and steep and narrow in the x direction. So that already gives us some sense of what's going on. It seems to be going up no matter what we do out of the origin and wider in the y direction and steeper in the z direction. Well, now let's look at contours. In other words, level sets. And uh, if z equals 0, then that's pretty special. That's just xy equals 0, 0. It's point. It's just the origin. If z equals 1, we have to remember our simple conic sections. This is where 4x squared plus y squared equals 1. Remember how to put, this is an ellipse, and let's remember how to put it in standard form uh, to figure out exactly what that ellipse looks like. This is x over one half squared plus y over one, or oh, sorry, x squared over one half squared plus y squared over one squared equals one. The reason to write it like that is it tells you exactly what the intercepts are and, and th thus how big it is. If you set y equals zero, you cover that up, then you get x equals plus or minus one half is where that's going to be true. So this is going to give you the intercepts, also called the semi-major and semi-minor axes, the A and B. Okay, so that's the standard form we're, we're reviewing there briefly. Okay, so, and then if z equals 2, 4x squared plus y squared equals 2. Now remember to put it in standard form, it's really, really, really important that this is a 1, not just some number. You have to make that a 1 first. So it's 2x squared plus 1 half y squared equals 1 fit that squeezes in over here, and so you get x over 1 over root 2 squared plus y, uh, x squared over 1 over root 2 squared plus y over root 2 squared equals 1. Same ratio, a root, the root 2 to 1 over root 2 ratio is still the 2 to 1 ratio that we had here, um, but it's just root 2 times bigger. So what we're seeing is it goes from the origin and it and it's an ellipse, not too surprising, because that's the kind of curve that would be narrower in one direction, that is along the x-axis, than along the, the y-axis. And then it's wider as it goes up. And so notice from just two traces and basically two contours, we've got a pretty good picture. I'll pause here.